Sally, what is the meaning of this? What is it, Mom? What kind of emergency? You've maxed out your emergency credit card again. What kind of emergency occurred at the J. Crew outlet? I support American-made quality products. It helps the economy or something. Your credit card was a privilege, a responsibility that your father and I trusted you with. You think you'd know a thing or two about that, given the sweater you're wearing? My sweater? Well, let's see. Uh, Pandora Sweater Company. I've never heard of that before. Um, oh, here it is. Pandora Sweater Company, run by Maysidor Gruber. And it looks like her obituary is in the Boston Herald. Maysidor Gruber remembered for more than just sweaters. May passed away March 4, 2013, just a few days shy of her 101st birthday. She was a champion of the underdog and never took no for an answer. She was a notable philanthropist and the owner of Manchester, New Hampshire's Pandora Sweater Company, who donated a large portion of her life to her community and the creation of various community programs. She was long before her time in terms of an executive, philanthropist, and activist, starting with her ownership of the Pandora Sweater Company, which began in 1964. But Father, Saul and I have proved that we're more capable of running this company than Ted. Even in the midst of the Great Depression with 25% unemployment, we invested our $1,500 to start Pandora. And we've managed to grow the business, turn a profit, and ensure our workers' rights to fair wages and safe working conditions. Ted is my son, and he is a family to support. With Saul's death, it will be just you alone. Running this company takes operations, marketing, budgeting, and work negotiations. Your responsibility is to the children, your home. Making sure this company is successful is how I can be responsible for my family and for the workers' families who depend on us. I'll buy the company. You need to raise a million dollars in 90 days. Be realistic. The key to success is to fashion your hooks in the sky, the farthest you can possibly imagine. Then, put on your track shoes, jog, walk, climb so you can get from where you stand to where you want to go. It won't come easy. Not like mothers comparing notes about their babies or trading recipes with one another. But I will not go backwards. I will march forth. May, how's it? I understand that you wanted to talk to me about Pandora Sorter Company. Yes, I wanted to ask the National Bank of North America for help with the capital necessary for me to buy out my father and brother. Well, I'm gonna have to say no. While you and Saul proved to be more than capable while at the helm, just you alone, be responsible, May. That's exactly what I'm trying to do by taking over the company. My father just decided that his son should be president. Saul and I were taking him to court, but in the middle of this, Saul dropped dead. His heart literally broke. Saul and I were partners. I'm not asking for your pity now. I need you, your support. We need to use our minds, energies, and resources for planning ahead, not looking back. Now, are you really sure that you're willing to devote all of your energies to the company? What about the Manchester Free Press? Saul and I started that newspaper because we wanted a more democratic one to rival the union leader. And it's strong enough to survive without my leadership. This is where I'm most needed as a leader right now. All right, give me your business plan. Under her sole leadership, May continued the work she and her husband Saul had begun to grow Pandora Industries from a regional business in the 1930s to a multi-million dollar national enterprise by the 1960s. Committed to promoting social and economic responsibility and fairness, she offered workers affordable health care plans, profit sharing, and held quarterly meetings to respond to workers' concerns and provide updates on the company. Most importantly, she continued to develop a sense of community with shared responsibility and shared rewards. Morning, May. I have the final shots for the Vogue advertisement. Hmm. No, we need to shoot it again. The models here are too stiff and doll-like, and we need them to look more like the women who wear our sweaters. I think I see what you're saying. You mean you want them to look more lifelike? Exactly. May, we've set the date for the employee awards ceremony and given it to the Berkshire and to publish. Thank you, Al. Good work. I'm glad you two are here, because I wanted to just discuss some ideas for some new employee programs with you. I think we could be doing more. You mean something similar to the land share you started last year, because I thought that was a great idea. Giving workers farmland in return for their hard work was a really practical idea. That was publicized in the Brookshire Yarn too, I think. Well, it's similar in that it encourages individual achievement and responsibility. Al and I were thinking of starting an, a fall suggestion contest 
to improve efficiency and do more for the community and the workers. Um, employees would submit ideas to better the workplace, and the top 11 entries would win prizes, totaling to $220. I could publish it in my knit and pearl column for the company newspaper. Makes sense. If your idea is partially responsible for Pandora's success, you have the right to be rewarded. But what about the employee scholarship program? Can we just start that? How will it affect profits? Life rule number five. If I see an opportunity to better this company by, and I favor the deal by at least 51%, I'll go for it. I run a big business, and it's hard, but we have good people, and I'm responsible for giving them the rights and benefits they deserve. Now that I have the power to do so, I have to give back to this company's community everything that it's given me. Well, this is a great way to do so. After selling the company in 1983, Mae Gruber turned her attention to promoting fair and responsible political, economic, and social practices in her community. For example, in 2011, at age 99, she carried a 99 sign in the Occupy Wall Street movement in New York City, highlighting the inequality of income between 99% of the population and the wealthiest 1%. Her innumerable philanthropic contributions to her community, such as this, remain as her legacy today. Oh. Mrs. Gruber, hi. I'm a reporter from the Boston Globe. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. Well, I thought it would be a great way to promote all of these vital community programs that I've helped establish. The scope of your um, community involvement is quite broad. Is there an underlying value or belief that connects your work? Well, I was given the quilt behind you as a gift for my 100th birthday. I think it does a great job of connecting all of the different pieces of my life together. The perfect roadmap for my journey. I can tell from the National Organization for Women and the League of Women's Voters. Help get women engaged in the um, both civic and political process. Yeah, and I helped found the Child Health Services to help at-risk youths from low-income families. And the Anna Philbrook Foundation, which provided emergency assistance for children with severe emotional and psychiatric needs. And, of course, I co-founded the Manchester Community Music School. And its youth orchestra, which is now a thriving, self-sustaining community nonprofit. Yes. Well, I was only doing my duty to my community. I didn't think of myself as a pioneer back then. I don't think there was time for that sort of thing. I was a businesswoman, a member of a community, a smaller part of the whole with the power to do good and the responsibility to use that power. Well, I'm certainly inspired. Thank you. May Gruber was a remarkable woman whose impact we felt for generations to come. She didn't plan on glory. She just showed up and did her best to help a good cause. I can't believe I never knew the legacy behind my favorite sweater. And now that you do, so what? What do you mean? I guess I should try to work harder, right? I've never really held myself accountable for doing nothing with my life before, but I don't even know where to start. Do you remember my 10th life rule? If you can't get in the door, Try a window. Precisely. It doesn't matter where you are now or where you failed in the past. There will always be a path that leads forward. It's up to you to take it, for your sake and for the rest of the world around you. Engage with it. Become involved. And always, always keep your eyes fixed on the furthest mountain peak you possibly can. Anchor yourself there, and you'll always know where to go. I think I understand. I'm responsible for my own life and what I do with it. Whatever I have the power to do, I owe it to my community to put out my best effort. And my power stops where I want it to. I just have to keep trying until I find something that works. Make every knock a boost. Like rule number nine, right? Everything is what you make of it. You're right. I can make a difference, so I have a responsibility to do it. But I have to start with myself. I have to change before I try to change the world. I see that now. It's going to be tough, but I won't give up, I promise. Remember, always keep your eyes fixed forward. I will. I've got my sky hooks right here, and there's nowhere to go but up. Chris, that wasn't.